Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at a mechanical hard drive. Don't tune out, stay with me because this single drive in my hand is 10 terabytes. Yeah, not one, not two, not three, not four, not six, eight was big, nah, 10 terabytes in a single, what we will call an enthusiast level hard drive. So it's the Seagate Barracuda Pro. And amazingly, because you know, like with um, hard drives, you kind of get the screws all over the top. So these little puppies are actually sealed because they're filled with helium as well. So it's all super kind of technical, more logical stuff that's going on. But 10 terabytes, there's, uh, the, I have to admit, the, the information for actually what's going on inside is a little bit hit and miss because of the way that the um, platters as in the discs, and then the heads are reported. Some say it's 14 heads and seven discs. Some say it's seven heads and 14 discs. But I would have assumed that you would have needed at least one head per disc. So we're gonna go with seven discs. And there are seven. When you look at a, um, a mechanical hard drive, you get like the little mirrored disc that's inside. This has got, if we're gonna go with seven, which seems to be the, the, the considering the space, seven inside, there are 1.4 terabytes each inside. Now, um, one thing I will say is um, with the mechanical hard drive, we've been reviewing solid state drives for so long that when it came to the mechanical, it was, you know, undoubtedly, it wasn't gonna be the fastest thing in the sheet. But for a mechanical hard drive, they've spent a lot of time with um, special cash on these. So uh, any programs that you might keep using continuously, it holds that in the 256 megabyte of cache on the drive to help speed uh, those sorts of things up. Now, uh, with the cache going on and testing with you know small files and stuff like that, you were looking, we were getting above 250 megasecond um, reads and around 240 writes. If you were to flood the cache and stuff like that, sometimes you can get it to drop down a lot more. And the other thing to think about with um, a mechanical hard drive is because of the disc, think about it as like an old vinyl record spinning around and this drive will spin it around at 7,200 megasecond. When you're writing on the, or reading on the outside of the drive, it'll be quicker because the outside of the drive is moving faster. But then when you get towards the inside of the drive, filling it up, uh, then they can slow down a little bit, but obviously 10 terabytes, I mean, we'd be there for ages trying to you know, actively fill it up. Now, the one thing you'd think the, the um, uh, where you've got seven platters spinning around in there, and it's obviously you've got all the heads spinning that you'd think it'd use quite a lot of power. And you were looking at it's they report below seven watts, and it can fall down to three watts for idle. Which, to be fair, unless you're running loads of them, which you know ten terabyte ones, surely you're not going to have like massive banks of them. Power use is pretty low. And you'd also think that the like the motor noise would be quite noticeable. Now, I'm a bit of a silence freak. It's it's just something I spend a lot of time tuning fans and you know I want things to be quiet. Now, if you're one of those people that leave your rig on overnight and you like everything to be perfectly silent, I will say if you're running a solid state drive now and you don't have mechanicals, then you're gonna you are gonna find them quite noticeable. It was very strange for me to have the whir and the clank of a mechanical going on in the office again when we were testing this. It wasn't excessively loud though, and I actually went back and I, I dragged out some older drives that we had kicking around, um, including some old one terabyte ones from about five years ago and stuff like that, and some up-to-date ones, which I borrowed. And to be fair, they were all, you know, much, much the same. There was a lot more going on in this one, because obviously, like I said, you've got those seven platters and the 14 heads. So when it was searching and doing stuff, you it did get a little bit noisier. But we were testing it in uh, like an open air kind of scenario. Once you got it in a decent case with the side on and stuff like that, it wasn't too bad. I will say that you do need to make sure that you've got sound, not sound deadening, but some kind of damping going on with it. If the cage that you put it into before it goes into your case is even ever so slightly loose, then the, the vibrations will pick that up. So it might be worth you kind of exploring other you know avenues. There are some mounts that you can get in the aftermarket kind of area 
where you can get like rubber mounts to go in with them and stuff and those will help you you know no end so if you're interested in looking at like the actual test results and stuff that we did because i didn't think it was really warranted with this uh, video review to talk about that but you can click the link that up underneath go to the oc3 website now it is seagate and I would be um, doing you a misjustice if I wasn't to say that they had a bit of a reputation for not necessarily lasting as long as some of the other brands in the past. Now, Seagate, um, they appear to be uh, working hard to kind of put those old things behind them. So the drive itself has got a five-year warranty. And you'll be saying to yourself, oh, yeah, but that's fine, Tom. But, you know, what about my data? What they actually do now as well is they offer a two-year data recovery option. Now, don't get me wrong, if you smash it with a hammer, do you know what I mean? Your missus goes crazy and throws your PC out of a window or something like that. It's, it's not necessarily, you might not be able to recover everything. But as long as, you know, I'm no technical, melodical kind of guy to be able to tell you the ins and outs of what they can and can't go. But you get a two-year limited warranty, they call it. And... You know, it'd have to be something pretty catastrophic if it was going to take this out. Now, you know, surges and stuff could be like connected to a bad power supply that dumps an awful lot of current or something down it. So you do have to cover things on, you know, your own side. But the fact that they give you that two year data recovery is pretty cool. Now, the other thing with 10 terabytes is it's it is massive, but to kind of they say you can use it, it's for kind of uh, a mega kind of enthusiast PC, but they do mention home servers as well in these, and not necessarily like a NAS drive, but they do have the Firewolf, which is their specific NAS drive, but they do mention these for home servers. Now, just to put an idea out there for you, for a home server, is you want 10 terabytes of storage and you want it safe. So you just, what do you do? Do you get yourself a load of individual drives, which means you're gonna have a massive case and you might then need a RAID card because of extra ports that you'd need. Or then something like this pops up when you could quite literally have two of these and you could just run a RAID 1, which is mirroring. And then if one of your dri drives die, you've got it on the other one. So you've got two drives and you've got 10 terabytes of data and you don't need a massive case. And we've already said that the, you know, the read and the writes are pretty healthy on this anyway. So if you're using it for films and stuff, it's even got a special media layer of caching that's going on. So it could actually be uh, something that, like I said, you could end up running for, I'm say, I've got a home server with loads of hard drives in it and it's big and I've got a RAID card in. But if you were to move on to something like this and you only needed tens, you could make yourself a tiny, tiny ITX based server with a couple of drives in it, you know, in your Plex and all your other sort of bits and bobs that you might need it, like your home cloud software and stuff like that. And you could actually make it into a really, really tiny footprint. So having such big drives and then the the warranty and the support behind it, it actually made, even made me sort of sit there, you know, that could actually be really quite cool. But anyway, I'm wondering now, so as I've said, it's a big old drive and you'd probably, I think this is going to be the sort of drive that a content creator is going to want. Maybe someone like me that's making videos. Maybe someone like you that's uh, starting a YouTube channel at home because you're jumping your bikes off cliffs and stuff like that. Or you're running around throwing, I don't know, beer bottles on your mate's head, that sort of thing. And you'd be amazed. The data just does get blitzed really quickly. Um, and like I said, rather than in the days gone by where you would have needed loads and loads of hard drives, you can actually end up making your life quite simple. Or it could be for some epic, epic prawn stashes, or for those of you out there that want to have almost the entire Steam library on your um, a, a single disc. The weird thing is, is if you go and have a look at the graphs on the website, we could probably fit most of the solid state drives that we've tested in the last few years on this single drive. So um, just to kind of recap, so I didn't want to be around forever. I've kind of given you enough kind of to go on with and, you know, ideas and told you about noise and all that sort of stuff. £450. Yes, it's not particularly cheap, but that's an awful lot of data that you can get on there as well. 
And like I said, because it is a mechanical, it's probably not going to be for you silence freaks or you're going to end up having to turn it into a project to just dampen it from your case. You, uh, you might find, this is you know, quite a weird one, but yes, the drive does make, um, will create the noise, but your case can be the thing that magnifies it. So sometimes all you need to do is, if you think about the old, we're going back to records again, if you think about the old record players with the big horns and that, that's where the music came from, from a such tiny thing, well your case can end up almost turning into a speaker because of the noise if it's not damped properly. So if you um, manage to damp the drive enough, then those vibrations then can't be transferred into the case and then obviously because it's in the case and the case is much bigger, then your ears get to pick up on it as well. So that would be my biggest hint if the noise of any, any, not just this one, any mechanical hard drive does your head in, just spend some time looking for decent, proper um, uh, dampening options. So lots of little things for you to think about there. It's gonna be a weird one for me because it's gonna be like, it's gonna be a shame for it to go because I almost now want to just literally leave this thing reading and writing for such a long time to see how we get on. But I would love to know your thoughts, how you might actually use it. Is this the type of thing that you'd want to buy? Are you one of those people now that are going to be a solid state only? If this was something that you're like, oh my days, I'd love to know what you would use it for. I'd love to know what you would put on it. And if you want to share those thoughts and uh, join the discussion on the drive, you can jump on with us on the OC3D forums. I'll put the link for that underneath as well. But for now, at least this has been another video with the tiniest of Tom Logans out.